Hello, everybody. It is Self Care Sunday. Welcome to Self Care Sunday. Hey, Kitty. Good to have you with us. Oh, uh, hey, 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 Jenny, Miss Pasadena's in the house. Welcome, Miss Pasadena. Good to have you with us. Dennis. Hola, Michelle. Good to have you with us live, live, Michelle, on Self Care Sunday. It is good to have you all here. Tell me about your day. Tell me what we are grateful for. Tell me about it. I want to know. I want to know what you, you are grateful for this self-care Sunday. Hey, Gwen. Great to have you here. Thank you for joining us tonight. What are you doing, uh, everybody? What are you grateful for this Sunday night? On Self-Care Sunday, on this 11th, 11th of October? Yes. It is the 11th of October. A day off! Woo! Go, Gwen! Go, Gwen! Gwen got a day off. Woo! We're right there with you. We're excited for you. Have a day off. I want to sign up for one of those. In the coming weeks, I think. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic and hopeful. Two people got a day off. Kitty and Gwen got the day off. I am happy, very happy for you ladies. And uh, nice weather, Kitty. Yes, that's nice. Uh, Jennifer's with us. Yeah, I mean, um, hey, Jennifer, glad to have you. And good mo uh, evening, Adele and Dazzle. Good to have you here. Yeah, average transaction is on its way up um, and continues to rise. Uh, Michelle, and that, that is something I am seeing consistently across the country. Even with traffic counts down, the tra transaction count is up. And uh, I mean, the, the amount per transaction is up. Items per transaction is up. And these are good stats. Um, and they're stats to keep in mind, okay, Michelle. So the important thing is, as you're working with customers, those are important things to keep in mind of what uh, that they aren't just leaving with one thing okay that they should be leaving with many things hey Jenny great to have you here um, and um, it's important to keep in mind with your pricing because again there there has been a lot of elasticity in pricing where you can raise the pricing on things that are moving you know, thinking in cl women's clothing, leggings, and comfortable clothing, and things um, where you can raise the pricing on, where you have some room to raise the pricing, because that's what people are buying right now, and you're selling right through that. And, um, you know, just like desks and furniture things that are flying out the door for furniture stores. There's room to raise the prices on those items than you may have been able to get at the same time last year. So um, those are important things uh, to be able to do and to increase your profitability at these times. Again, we want to make as much hay as we can uh, while it is possible. Um, yeah, we want to we wanna really make as much hay. Ooh, I forgot my glasses. Hang on a second, guys. Peanut Gallery, can you grab what's on the printer for me? Thank you. Okay, I've got glasses now. And we are in Rocktober, so that's a real important thing. Supply And it's supply and demand. And there, there is a real um, opportunity with that. Um, 
it's not opp it's not it, it's opportunity but it's not being opportunistic i guess is the, is the other side of it it's not you're taking advantage of people it it's you know supply and demand because your your time in the store is less with those items there's room to raise the price and uh and it's something you should take advantage of uh and take the opportunity to do put more money both in your consigner's pockets or supplier's pockets, but also in the store's pocket, okay? Because this is what keeps you here. This is what keeps you around uh, for the future. So, um, you know, that's how we keep you profitable. Thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, that is, that is hugely important. Hugely important, and I want to keep you as profitable as can be. Hey, Julie Jankowitz is with us tonight. Welcome to the program, Julie. Great to have you here. You! Um, so, that is great news, people. I'm glad to hear all that you are grateful for on this self-care Sunday. Uh... Because Self-Care Sunday is a day all about you, and I'm thrilled that some of you actually got a day off. A day off is a wonderful thing, and it's important. It's important for your self-care. Yes, they do, Julie. Your customers and uh, your consigners want you here. That is a very important point. They, they want you to survive. They want you to not only survive, they want you to thrive. Okay? And so, you know, pricing appropriately is incredibly important. Um, you know, this is not about giving the, the lowest price. It's about giving the best value. And, um, you know, so for items that are in short supply, the price of that should be going up. Um, but, uh, you know, you got this. I love this for Self-Care Sunday. For Self-Care Sunday, we're going to the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is where we start the program every night. And tonight, if you're following along in the book, we are on page 102. 102. Good morning. Your pace today. No one else's. Your pace. You can't be rushed. You can't be slowed down. That is our good morning today. Our good morning today. Uh, that is a great one for Self-Care Sunday. And flipping to Self-Care Sunday and the Resale Strong Cookbook. This cookbook we started right at the beginning uh, 29, 30 weeks ago. The Resale Strong Cookbook because all you people were baking. I mean, not all of us can be Jennifer with a flour pantry, okay? who was totally prepared for this, okay? And I've seen this flower pantry in person, and it's impressive. I've had the benefits of the flower pantry, which is even better. Okay? <laughs> um, you know, um, and... Um, strong Cookbook. And this week, this week, the Resale Strong Cookbook brings you the Disney recipe. Uh, the Great Stuff recipe. It's time to tie your napkin around your neck while we provide a new easy-at-home recipe inspired by the ultimate gray stuff found at Disney parks around the world. Being one of our most tough recipes, our chefs got together to create this simple version for the entire family. We'll enjoy making and eating. Why not make it a Beauty and the Beast-themed evening and served while watching the animated classic or the live-action version, or both, on Disney+. Plus. I didn't make to make this an for Disney Plus, uh, and we invite you to relax, pull up a chair as we proudly present the gray stuff. And um, we have done this, we have made this at home, and it's sponsored by Disney and Rebecca's trip to Disney this week. Rebecca leaves for Disney in the morning. Um, uh, you know, this has been a much delayed trip uh, that was supposed to be spring break graduation uh, trip uh, for uh, college. And it's been planned since January and moved many, many times, and now it is happening. So uh, the flight takes off tomorrow. It's on time. She'll be in Orlando. And uh, 
My credit card will be in Orlando, which is just exciting. I mean, it's like I'm there. I mean, it's like uh, it, it is like I am in Orlando. I mean, I'm just telling you, I can. Capital One feels like it is getting sunned on and getting the Florida sunshine of. Uh, but uh, Orlando is 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 there. Uh, and yeah, th thank you, Julie. Julie is wishing you a great trip. Thanks, Julie. You're not wishing my credit card a great trip, Julie. Um, <laughs> well, hey, you know, I was, you know, in in her, you got to appreciate Rebecca as our sponsor of this trip. You know, when she got convinced us on this trip, which originally started as a family trip and then didn't become that. But uh, you know, she had us get a gift card. Uh, a Disney gift card for it and then one negotiated her way up to get a higher amount because if we bought it at BJ's it cost us less so BJ's another wholesale a Costco type wholesale club if you don't have it in your area and um, you know so after her father uh, you know it gets that so um, you know yes I am sure she will have a fabulous time more impressive is you know, I'm really impressed because the uh, computer that I broadcast on, the normally broadcast on, we had a uh, technical issue with the power cord dying, and Rebecca has one as well, and she said, oh, I can use hers right now while we wait for another power cord, and I'm like, oh, you're not taking it with it, and this is an electronics-free trip, other than their phone, this is a Disney vacation, and so they're taking no computers, no anything with them. So, um, you know, you got to you gotta love all that. So, it is Rocktober, people. It is Rocktober. But that is our Disney sponsor. And if you haven't made the gray stuff before, it's actually very good. It's a great accompaniment to any meal. I mean, it's from themed from the Disney uh, movie. We made something else. This is like our second or third Disney recipe during the re in the Resale Strong Cookbook. I think we... We made a cookie. We made a cookies or something one I don't week. Know. Okay, we made cookies. I know there's at least one other Disney recipe. It might have been the same one. Who knows? In the Resale Strong Cookbook. Um, but this is like super easy. Yes, um, and this recipe is super easy. Rebecca says she's made it for us. I I don't actually cook. Um, she makes it, but uh, that is our. Uh, <laughs> That's great, Kitty. Yes, I wondered the same thing. I wondered the same thing. They want to know how you're going to survive without electronics. Well, I don't need them. She doesn't need them. She's at the most magical place on Earth. The happiest place on Earth. Why would you need electronics in the happiest place on Earth? And she has this trip planned to the minute detail, from every meal to every park to every everything. Um, you know, so they are, they, I mean, it's going to be an amazing trip. I mean, we, we, we love that. Uh, Dis the Disney magic, there is so much we as business owners can learn from Disney magic. One of the... Um, businesses that I used to consult with. It was a uh, t-shirt shop on Cape Cod. T-shirt shop on Cape Cod, and if you ever traveled to Cape Cod, you know of Cuffy's t-shirts. Cuffy's uh, sold his t-shirts, started selling out of his mom's trunk, out of their car in college, and uh, and uh, and uh, they uh, took that um, trip and uh, I mean and, and so he goes to Disney every year and video I mean he goes through and like videos what they're doing in the stores videos what what is happening on things to make his shops the funnest place on Cape Cod and so but as a business owner there's always so many lessons you can learn Legoland is only 40 in Winter Haven is only 45 minutes away from Disney and, and, and Rebecca, as an employee of Lego, remember the corporate office of Lego is just over there on the old set. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did. I, uh, she's pretty sure she gets free admission as a corporate employee of Lego. 
but this trip is all Disney, all Disney. Um, they are not leaving the Disney property. Um, they they are not leaving. Uh, um, not leaving the Disney property. Yeah, I mean the Disney the Disney is a great lesson, Jennifer. I mean a great lesson. Oh, Cassandra from my peanut gallery is joining us. Hey, Joanne and Angie Nebraska and Pat in the peanut gallery. Great to have you here. Vina's j joining us tonight. Um, the Disney books provide so many lessons on people and business. And um, what was the Pixar book, Rebecca? Yeah, that we read. Um, that's the other book. It's a, not really a Disney book, but it's a phenomenal book. It's uh, called Creativity Inc. Creativity Inc. is another book. It's not actually a Disney book. It's about the building of Pixar, which then later became a Disney company. Um, but an awesome book. It, it is an awesome book. I got to say, it is an awesome book. I did it on audio. Uh, and we have a physical copy, too. But uh, it is a phenomenal book, and I highly recommend that. Are you in Florida? Where are you now, Angie? I don't even. Uh, I don't even know where you are. Uh, are you in Nebraska? Are you coming? To, are you offering to come pick up Rebecca at Disney to take her to Legoland, in the vet? Yeah, I mean, these are business lessons. The Chick-fil-A books, I mean, the Cathy's, um, whether you agree with their business practice, these are, these are fundamental business principles, okay, taken from real life, pages from real life. And ultimately, it's about people. It's what I tell you about all the time. It's about relationships and people. And the younger me, you know, I mean, somebody said, I, oh, I wish I were younger or be able to do some of these things. And I, and I, you know, Cassandra and I had this discussion recently, and I'm like, you know, if I wanted to be a younger version of me, I wish I had all the knowledge that I had now. I wish I was the person that I am now, the person that I became. And then I'm still evolving. I am not the person I will be five years from now because I continue to learn and evolve. I continue to read. I continue to, to um, be open to change and not be the person that I was when I was in my 20s, where I was... I was I think I was smart when I was in my 20s, but I was a jerk, okay? <laughs> you know, I mean, I wasn't the same person, you know, that I am today. I mean, Cassandra, you know, you know, talks about, you know, her, her first uh, impressions of me, you know, back in the 20s when she chased me down. I mean, you can follow the internet story on it. She chased me down to be on my marketing team and everything else, and um, that story, um, but um, we, uh, you know, her first impression that I was an obnoxious asshole back in my 20s, in my early 20s, okay? But she still couldn't get enough of it. I'm just saying, that's the way the story goes. <laughs> you can read about it on the internet, okay? Here's the Creativity Inc. book. Um, absolutely phenomenal. I gotta say... Um, we have it in hardcover. We have it on uh, audio uh, that we've listened to it. Really a phenomenal book. Um, great business lessons and great about culture. Company culture and stuff in that book is truly phenomenal and how you bring that together. And at the back, there's um, like thoughts for managing creative culture that it has tips on how to do. And... and at the, the great thing is in the printed version of that book, at the back of it, it, has, it says, okay, how do you start? Okay, how do you start with this? How do you take your culture and start? How do you develop a Pixar-type culture, okay, which was different from Disney, okay, and make that work in your company? Where do you start? And so... Um, it, it, I, I, you know, out of business books, it's really a, a great uh, business book. I love so many areas outside of Florida. I mean, I see Angie and, and Pat talking back and forth on, on different places. I mean, there's so many great areas outside of Orlando. We used to spend a lot of time down there. And, and it's one of Rebecca's happy moments of growing up is we used to spend 
until school got really mad at us for pulling her out of school, we used to go down at Thanksgiving, which was a quieter time for us business-wise. We would go down there for two or three weeks, sometimes a little longer, than, you know. We would really push the envelope with that um, and be um, rent a condo down there and stay down there for a few weeks. We'd do the park some, but we'd really do everything else. We'd do Winter Park and the Farmer's Market, and we met so many great future businesses and restaurants that developed out of the, out of the farmer's market. Um, we would do, um, oh, what's the, uh, Mount Dora, okay, and we would go antiquing and eat at the little cafes in Mount Dora. We would go around Florida. I mean, there was just so much that we would do that wasn't park related. So many, you know, people just think the parks when they think Florida. So, I mean, we're thrilled that Rebecca's doing this trip. Um, we're thrilled that Capital One is sponsoring it. Um, and <laughs> ah, I can't hear you. I'm on my show right now. Um, <laughs> uh, we're just um, thrilled that. What, what resort are you staying at? They're staying at the Pop Century Resort, which we've never stayed on property at Disney. We've always um, stayed off property. Um, when we've gone there, because we've taken in so much else, but Pop Century is where Rebecca will be at starting tomorrow, and uh, an intense schedule, including dinner at Cinderella's. No, so we have dinner at um, Be Our Guest, which is the Beauty and the Beast Castle, we have lunch at Cinderella's Royal Table. Exactly. Lunch at Cinder Cinderella's Royal Table, and dinner at Be Our Guest, be our guest in the... Um, so the, be your guest is in Beast Castle from Beauty and the Beast. I mean, so living the living the dream, living the dream. Hey, Chris, great to have you with us. Oh, so I mean, so excited! What a great way to start the week! What a great way to start the week on a happy note, and our recipe of the week being Disney sponsored. So I am, and, and all the recipes are at narts.org slash resale strong in the resale strong cookbook, which we have been building. And I know there's at least one other Disney recipe. I want to say it's a Grand Floridian one, but I'm not. Double tree one, right? I think we compared the Grand Floridian cookie recipe to the Double Tree cookie recipe, to Jennifer Johnson's cookie recipe. I think we've done. I think we've done the comparison of all three. I like all of them, but I like Jennifer's the best. Just saying. Um, flour pantry cookie. I, I'm just something about it. Yeah, that's really that. That's really a part of it. Is Kitty is the transportation, and and they're looking so forward to it. You know, we've done many things on the property. Like, we've gone to high tea at the Grand Floridian, even though I'm the weirdo at that and gets coffee. Um, but uh, Cassandra and her mother, Nana, Nana love uh, the high tea at the Grand Floridian with the little sandwiches and everything, and we've done that many times. Um, you know, it's just, it, there's nothing beats a Disney experience. What I love about... And, and, and so this goes, so let's, let's go there. Let's talk about people, because this is all about people and training and everything else. Being a studier of that lesson, okay, the lessons learned there, what I love about Disney is they teach their people to think within the Disney bounds. So as you interact with staff at Disney, cast members, cast members excuse me, at Disney, Okay, I'm, I'm calling them by the wrong term. As you interact with, with cast members at Disney, they're allowed to interact with you, you know, within realms. They aren't, they aren't scripted. And, and you really notice the difference, okay, between rigid script, okay? So if you go to Universal Parks, as an example, Okay, versus Disney, uh, um, you really see um, 
Disney t-shirt. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't realize he also, uh, you know, I knew he worked uh, for the travel agency, Vina, but I didn't realize he designed a Disney t-shirt, too. I mean, I know he's designed others. You've sent me a t-shirt that he's designed. Um, but I didn't realize he, uh, he designed other uh, t d t Disney t-shirts, too. Uh, Rebecca's got a whole collection of stuff of Disney wear and everything else that has been curated and a collection of ears to wear at different times and bands and everything else. But I want to talk about the culture of thought, okay, for a second. Because as you look at Disney and the way they train their cast members, okay, to be appreciative of their guests, to take the time to understand and think outside the box, okay, and come up with different responses versus the other parks in the Orlando area, such as Universal. And Universal is a great park, okay? We've had lots of great times there. I mean, one of the things with being off property is Rebecca and I would do the parks sometimes, and Cassandra and Nana would go off and do other things, antiquing or do other things during the day, and they would drop us off. They would drop us off at Universal, they'd drop us off at Disney, they would do that, and we would do the, the, the whole park thing, Rebecca and I, going all over God's creation. Okay, um, but, and we have phenomenal memories of that, but as you interacted with staff members at Universal, the Universal Parks, it was the same canned question and responses. Are you having a day? You know, what did you have to eat? You know, it was the same exact question, asked the exact same way every time you interacted with a cast member. And what you find at Disney is each cast member has their own spin on it, has their own responses, has their own way of interacting. Okay, while staying within the Disney theme, okay, and the cast member theme, um, they are, um, they, they allow for freedom of expression. So, whereas Universal is, this is the script, this is what you say, this is what you say all the time, okay, Disney has a different way of thinking about that. Think about McDonald's again, okay? So as I've talked about McDonald's several times on this show, okay, would you like an apple pie with that? Would you like a hot apple pie with that? Okay, oh my God, I can smell the apples. Would you like an apple pie when they just came out of the oven? Only 99 cents, okay? Freedom of expression, okay? And one of those times, you know, one of the experience, I mean, I have vivid memories of some of our trips to Disney. And one of the times I, I was there uh, with Rebecca and we were walking into the park. And, and you know, um, if you've been there for the end, uh, your pleasure at Chick-fil-A. And, and quite honestly, Kitty, I mean... Patty will tell you a letter that I wrote her one time that taught me the proper use of my pleasure. I mean, Patty, little, little, little Patty Aquisto. I mean, I love the woman, okay? I love the woman, and she has taught me so much, okay? And, um, but I, I think of the time where she beat me up for saying to somebody, no problem. We were at a meeting, and I'm like, no problem! And, like, you would have thought this little woman, okay, took on this six... Well, I mean, she, you would have thought she punched me in the gut, took me over, whacked me, okay, and taught me about my pleasure, and taught me how to properly act, and, and to, to treat, and, and use the phrase, my pleasure, with sincerity. But, you're right. So, so I remember one experience at Disney okay, where a young Rebecca, okay, uh, and I won't say how old she was because this memory doesn't have it, but, you know, Tinkerbell flies over Disney and lights the fireworks at night. If you've been to Disney, you see the fireworks light at night, and Tinkerbell starts that show off, okay, and it's part of the magic of Disney. Disney is about the magic, okay, 
And I remember one day we were in the park, her and I, and we were walking up and she saw this wire going to Cinderella's castle. And she's like, Tinkerbell is fake. Tinkerbell is flying on this line. She's not really flying. What a hoax this is. And this Disney cat, and, and, and she might have been like five, okay? I mean, okay, she was young, okay? Because Rebecca doesn't even remember this as I'm telling this story, okay? But I, you know, she is like, what BS, okay? I mean, she called, <laughs> she calls BS, okay, you know, even at that age, you know, she's like, don't teach me something I already know, don't, you know, you're lying to me, Disney. You're lying to me, Disney, and she was mad that Disney was lying to her, and, you know, here you have her, and she is like, that is how Tinkerbell lights the sky. This is all. Huh. They have been hurting me. Huh. How could they do that to me? How could Disney lie to me? And the cast member, okay, totally unscripted, totally that comes up to her and I and says, That's not, that has nothing to do with Tinkerbell. Okay, hello? Cinderella needs cable TV. Okay? Cinderella needs cable TV. That's for her cable TV. Okay? That is not a script, people. That is adjusting on the fly to the situation that's... Okay, you have this child disappointed in the magic of Disney, and this cast member comes up out of nowhere and talks to her about cable TV. Okay, and that's the cable for the TV. Okay, so Cinderella can watch TV. Okay. But every interaction was not the same. Every time we met a cast member, and that is the, the spontaneity. That is having a conversation with people. That is what your staff does in your store. Okay, it's not about sticking directly to the script. It's about sticking to the essence of it, the heart of it. What's in your heart in that script? Okay, as you do that. Okay, what's in your heart? Universal sticks to the script. All they say, I mean, if you walk through Universal Studios and their parks, you'll hear the same three or four lines all the way through it. Because they beat that into their team. What Disney does is beat the essence, the heart of the message. So what you want to do with your team is get the, mess, the heart of the message into it. The heart of the message. You want them to have heart, okay? I never chastise my people for having heart, for believing in their customer, for taking care of the customer. I love... I love when I hear that. I have their back a thousand percent, even if it's something I wouldn't do. I love that. I love when they have heart. Okay, I love seeing that. Okay, I mean, did you see our, I mean, anybody that follows, I think it was on our Instagram today. I don't even know. I don't Instagram, really. One of my staff today posted, you know, her 103-year-old grandmother came to visit the store today. And she sat there in a rocking chair in our furniture store, basically supervising her employee, which was great. Um, but it's the heart. It's the essence of the message. So that is the difference at Disney. That is what stores around the world go down there to learn. Okay, so Disney, business expense. Okay, you can go learn. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, so here, here, here's a picture. Here's our Instagram today at Cutiques of Amanda's 103-year-old grandma visiting the store in that rocking chair. And I'm like, you know, it, it's awesome. It's awesome that Graham uh, made Instagram at 103. Okay, holding pictures, showing things off. Okay, and uh, just generally having a good time. It's about heart, people, and you have heart. So that's what Disney teaches us. That's what the lessons you can learn from down there. If you go to Disney 
you can learn those lessons. It's a business expense because you're gaining that knowledge just like Cuffy does, okay? Um, when he goes down there and videos it and brings back the videos. I mean, he goes, I mean, he's done this for decades. I mean, I worked with him in the 90s. I'm aging myself, I guess. Uh, I guess good thing it's a birthday week while I'm aging myself. Um, but a birthday month, I'm told. Um, but he videoed, I mean, back on probably even beta. I mean, for those of you that know what that is, that's not just a computer term for testing. It used to be an actual term for how you recorded things. Um, but he would do that to learn the best practices, okay? And Disney has a heart. So learn the heart, okay? The heart is an amazing thing. And especially as we're in Rocktober. Um, so one of the things I've had questions about lately, so where am I? I feel like I've gone off on tangents here tonight. Which I have, but it's been a good tangent. Has it not been a good tangent? You've all still been watching, so I guess that's been a good enough tangent. Um, is COVID. And, you know, what, the, what do we do with COVID? What are people doing? What's happening? And so I had a conversation the other day with people at a major hospital to find out, okay, what are you doing as a major hospital about COVID? What are you doing to screen people coming into your place as a major hospital about COVID? How are you weeding out your employees with COVID? How are you handling this? I mean, you have thousands of employees, tens of thousands of people coming in and out of these buildings every day, okay? How are you dealing with this um, from a COVID perspective? Because, you know, as store owners, you freak out, okay, that somebody has a symptom okay or that somebody has something and you got to keep in mind walmart and target etc countless businesses home depot everybody yes they've had visits we count we talked about it on this show on how many cases amazon had in their warehouses um they did not close any of these facilities they did not close walmart did not close their stores to to do things. They did close some of the, they had reduced operating hours at some and things like that. But what do you do and what is the screening? Okay, I can tell you first and foremost, the number one screening is temperature. Okay, from a healthcare provider perspective, the number one screening they're doing is temperature. And I'll, I'll post pictures of this later uh, or tomorrow. Because it's interesting to see, because I have pictures of inside a hospital, a, a major hospital of what they're doing, okay, and how they're, how they're screening people. So one of the screenings they're doing is obviously the forehead temperature scan, okay, but that's sort of an afterthought. They're using video screening, they have little stands up, okay, as people are, are walking into the building okay that they are um and i don't know that it'll show up well on here but i'll post the picture later okay so a little stand like that that you might interact with that'll tell you whether you're allowed to move beyond that or not that is scanning you for temperature and they also are using they've updated their security systems so they've updated take all the cameras that are around the hospital campus i mean there are a gazillion cameras around a hospital ca ca campus, and that is a real number. You can check the Wall Street Journal, gazillion. It's a real number, okay? It's, a, it, it's an actual unit of measurement, gazillion, okay? And they are, they've adapted the software on that for heat screening, okay? Again, for temperature, and I can post a picture of that as well, okay? Because that is one of their biggest things that you can't see but you can see if you're screening for it okay and they know that's an issue okay so that's that's the first thing they're doing then they're asking do you have any of the following symptoms which is again goes back to our daily self checklist 
that is available at narts.org slash resale strong that we got from the Nash, our friends at the National Retail Federation for a daily employee self checklist. And, and here is what they are asking. Do you have any of the following symptoms? A new cough, shortness of breath, repeated shaking and chills, muscle pain, sore throat, new loss of taste and or smell, generalized abdominal discomfort, nausea or diarrhea, and the new one they added, which is, and, and you'll see that this was added after the fact because it's in a different color, new congestion or runny nose. Okay, those are the questions they're asking. Okay, so uh, of anybody entering the building. And they're actually asking you to read those, okay, to actually, yeah, they're not asking, this is not like an internet terms of service where you check I agree, okay, because if you just blatantly say, yeah, no, I, yeah, I did all that, if you watch the people coming into the building, they're like, no, you got to read this. Now, that's great that you said okay, now read, read them to me, and they're doing that, okay, which is great. So then you take the follow-up question. You take a major hospital system and you say, what are you doing for your own employees? What are you requiring for COVID of your own employees, the hospital workers, from the janitor to the nurse to the doctor? What's the requirement for them? And this is where it got interesting. This is where it actually got surprising. Keeping in mind that I have an employee uh, among others, that works for a nursing home um, in, as a, another job. And they're testing all the staff at the nursing home over, I forget whether it's every four or five weeks. So they have a rolling schedule of who they're testing um, at the nursing home, uh, which is great, okay? So everybody's getting tested every four or five weeks, okay? They're just rolling testing. So you're getting tested every four or five weeks. And I've talked about that before on the program. At the hospital, you don't get tested, okay, on t uh, on, under only one of two circumstances. They are doing no employee testing. So this is a major hospital system, okay, and they are only testing under one of two circumstances their employees, okay, that you have direct symptoms, or you have traveled to a hot spot. So like if you went on your honeymoon, I talked to one doctor who went on his honeymoon and came back. He got married, went on his honeymoon, he went on a honeymoon to a hot spot, and he was required to be tested and when he came back before he could return to work. Hospital employees are not tested, okay, because of contact. They are informed that they came into contact with somebody who had COVID. The cafeteria worker that delivered to a COVID room, the uh, nurse that works in a person that tested positive, they're testing all people that have been admitted to the hospital or all people that are there for outpatient uh, tests or services, but they are not testing employees until they exhibit a symptom, okay? And then they're only having them quarantine until they get the results. They are not having anybody else that worked with them quarantine. They are not having, uh, informing any patients. Oh, I mean, this is a hospital policy and how they're doing it. This is a, and a hospital is a business and a healthcare provider. You have to keep that in mind. They're both a business and a community health provider. But this is how they are approaching and dealing with it. Okay, temperature first. Okay, temperature being their, their most predominant indicator. Okay, and, um, then, um, and then until you exhibit one of these symptoms, you are not getting a test. They will test you after you exhibit one of these symptoms, and they will quarantine you to the result, which they're testing in their own labs. But, um, so they're getting the result fairly quickly. Uh, but they are not, uh, you know, doing any other quarantine, you know, to other people that you've come in contact with or anything else. So just keep that in mind in your own world because that's what's happening. I will post these questions I will, I, that they're asking, 
Okay, I will post the examples of both the video monitor that I showed you tonight and the security camera so you can see a full color screening of how they're heat mapping you. Okay, because I grabbed that uh, for you when I had these conversations. So I, I want you to understand from a healthcare perspective, if that's what's happening from healthcare, okay, at the highest levels of healthcare, okay, you don't need to be shutting down your stores because somebody, we're all coming in, con, in the public sphere, all of us in the public run the risk of coming in contact with this. This is a highly transmittable disease, highly transmittable. Okay, so there's no denying that. Again, masks, frequent cleaning, frequent washing your hands. Those are the most important things. If you're doing those things, you are doing so much to help prevent the spread. Okay? Keeping your areas cleaner than they would have been in February. Okay? Keeping yourself cleaner. Washing your hands more often than you would have in February. Wearing a mask like you wouldn't have in February. I mean, I used to think of, you know, I mean, I used to, you know, think an oddball. My father used to wear a mask in the winter a lot of times when the air became lighter and everything else because of his heart condition and everything else. And I used to think, oh, my God, you know, everybody's going to think, well, weirdos. Now everybody's a weirdo. Everybody's wearing a mask. Okay? Everybody's wearing a mask. Okay? It's okay. Make your mask fun. Reflect your personality. There's so many ways to do that. so many ways to do it so but that's how you keep your community safe that is what's happening in our hospital systems okay this is a major hospital system that I got this from and I will post it and I think it even has their name on it it does have their name on it so the picture does have their name on it it's one of the largest ones between Boston and New York okay in the insurance capital of the world okay um, so um, I was I was surprised that there was the the surprise the only surprise takeaway for me on that okay the only surprise that came to me on that was that they were not they didn't have any rotation for for testing their employees as part of the process on an ongoing basis and um, that part surprised me a little bit because of I already knew that my uh, employee that works for the nursing home had that uh, but uh, you know that side of it surprised me but they have it on they have it as best under control as they can you have to have it as best under control as you have I also am looking because I've been asked for it and I know I have the details of the CDC guidance on it uh, the most recent updated um, I know I have something from the National Retail Federation, and I will dig that out and post that as well. So that is, folks, uh, my, uh, that is Self-Care Sunday for you. How about that for self-care? Disney business lessons, Disney recipe, and health care. What more could you want? You know, all of this, everything that I post, including these images that I'll post later, They'll be over to narts.org slash resale strong by noon the very next day, including our recipe of the week, the gray stuff. It'll all be over there at narts.org slash resale strong. This video will be there, the link to it on the YouTube channel. You're not alone running this store where you can like, comment, and subscribe directly to the videos. Yes, you can. Right there. It's all there for you, folks. It is, it is all there and available, easily accessible for you. But it's also there to keep you organized and so that you can easily share it. Share it with everybody. Make it available to everybody. Make sure everybody in your neighborhood gets to the other side of this. Your community. Let's get them all to the other side because that's our job here. That's our mission. Get everybody to the other side. Let them know that they're not alone running whatever their business is. Butcher, baker, candlestick maker. They could be Cinderella for all I know. I mean, Disney could be watching this very show. How do I know? 
But I know you're watching and you're tuned in even when you catch the replay and I'm so appreciative. I mean, I'm beyond humbled by how many of you watch this, not only live, but watch the replay. I mean, it's, it's truly humbling. We start this program every night, every night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start this program. You know, if you have a question in between shows, this is what you get to ask me live during the NART, in the NARCH private Facebook group for our members. But you have a question in between or maybe a question that's a little more personal than you want to ask here live. You just email me. You email me at neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com, and make sure you include your phone number so I can give you a ring back. We start the program every night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. If you were not here at the top of the program, this passage is perfect for Self-Care Sunday. We're on page 102. Good morning. Your pace today. No one else's. You can't be rushed. You can't be slowed down. Our good night tonight is good night. Your pace in this life. No one else's. You can't be rushed. You can't be slowed down. There's your graphics, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Neil Abramson. I do like a good party. A birthday party, a wedding, a bar mitzvah, all of it. The honeymoon's coming to the end for Zach and Rachel, but their beautiful life is just beginning. Our night may be over tonight, but I'll be back tomorrow night at more 8th and ish. More 8th and ish. Who could ask for anything more? But until then, know that you and you, but most especially you, yes, you, you're not alone running this store. It's time for dinner. And then I've got to get to bed because it's time. then it'll be time to take somebody to the airport. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.